All right, squad, in today's video, I am going to show you how to use GitHub Actions, deploy our Next.js Rails project. So we're gonna deploy Next.js to Vercel, and we're going to deploy the backend API, Rails API to fly.io, or using GitHub Actions. So I'll quickly show you what that look, kind of looks like. So in here, we're going to have our GitHub workflow set up with deploy API file, and it's gonna deploy it to fly.io using all this kind of good stuff. I'm gonna show you how to set up the app from the beginning and you know all those kind of things and then also deploying the front end so deploying that to Vercel doing all the things you need to do and then at the end of the day we're going to have this beautiful app running on a actual website here and it's all functions and it's hello friend and friend at email.com and you can see here I'm going to open up the inspector when we hit save we're doing a post and that is to our backend small forest that's on fly you can see it there it's not the same as this URL so that's on a different API just golden so let's dive in all right so today what are we doing we are going to set up github actions the first thing that we need to do is actually jump into our project that we created so this is the Next.js Rails project. This is part three. So if you haven't been following along, watch those other videos. So the, the first thing that I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna create a new branch. So this branch is gonna be called GitHub Actions Video. Create that branch. Because the reason I'm doing that is I just wanna make sure that we're only running this on this branch for now while we're developing. And then once we're finished with that, you can actually change this. You'll see where we add it and make it main. So depending on what branch you wanna deploy on. All right, so in the root directory, we're now gonna create a new folder and it's gonna be dot, if this let me have to do it. Let's go new folder dot GitHub, right? And then we're gonna create a new folder inside of that one called workflows. And then inside there, we are going to create deploy api.yaml. So we need to have two files here. We need to have a deploy for the API and a deploy for the front end. All right, so we're gonna deploy next to Vercel and we're gonna deploy the API to fly.io. Okay, you could de deploy the, the front end to fly as well, but I think it's just way simpler just to get it going in Vercel. So the first thing is we're gonna um, give this step a name, right? So we're gonna just call it deploy API. And then we're gonna say on push. And then we're gonna have branches. It's kind of telling us what we need to do here. And then in here, what we wanna do is we're gonna name this the same as the branch we've just created so mine's github actions video so yours might be just github actions or if you want to do this on master or main you can do that as well but for me i just want to run it on here and then what we're going to have is jobs right so this tells us basically what jobs to run for this action so our first one is we're going to call our job deploy ah no i don't want that um deploy and then we're gonna give it a name. So this is gonna be deploy to fly IO. And all of this stuff is really just so that you can see what's going on inside of GitHub. And we're gonna run this on, so it's called runs on, and this is the image that you wanna use. So this will be Ubuntu latest. We're gonna use that image to run our step on. And basically a, a GitHub action runs on a Docker, I would imagine it's a Docker image. So we define the kind of the environment where we want to run this action in. Now, so we've got runs on and we want concurrency set here to deploy group. And this is optional, but it ensures that only one action runs at a time. Next, we're gonna define steps. And these are the steps that we go through as we're, we're running this. And then we're gonna go steps. And for now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say run. We're gonna go echo deploying API, right? That's all we wanna do right now. We just wanna test how this works. We wanna actually have a look in GitHub and see what's happening. Okay, so I'm setting that up for you or for us now so we can just see how this basically functions. The next file we wanna create here is now the deploy frontend.yaml. Okay, and let me bump this up because I've just noticed this is quite small. So if you haven't seen that's probably a bit better. Just make that up there. There we go, so we've got a bit better size. So now that we've got our deploy front end, this is gonna be the front end. 
okay so again similar similar piece of work here now we're going to have our name and this is going to be deploy front end yep on front branches cool so i'm just auto completing that here so we got github actions video which is what i've named my branch double check that and we're going to run a job deploy and we're going to be deploying to vercel here and we're running on ubuntu later so we're deploying to the deploy group and here we're going to have steps echo deploy front end all right now that's all good to go so what i'm going to do so if you now look at my uh, github desktop here we've got our two changes and we're going to just say um, demo uh, actions okay i'm going to push that to github okay let it do its thing and now what we can do is we, can, we go in github let me make this bigger as well we've got this actions button here right so you're going to click that and now what you're going to see here so i've got all this from the old stuff but you can see here we're running two actions and there's two workflows deploy api and deploy front end okay so let's have a look at this so this one's already finished and now we can see here it's got the deploy to vercel so you can see how these things match up right so there's deploy to vercel and there's the deploy front end so there's the front end now you hit, click on this little step and you can see here so it sets it up the job over here it then runs an echo deploying front end and that's what we wrote here right so it's running that step called echo front end and this is the same as if you just pulled up terminal and just gone echo deploying front end right so we're seeing the same thing so whatever you run in terminal this is basically what's happening these steps are calling things as we work through deploying front end and then we can see deploying front end and then it says complete job excellent so that's a successful run right now if we go back we can go to deploy api check the demo actions deploy to fly o running echo and then what is it deploying api right very simple but it just shows you how this thing works okay so we got that all down let's keep moving on and add some actual functionality so now what we're going to do is we're going to work on our api so i'm going to close the front end one for now and we're going to work on our api to get it into fly.io so firstly you need to go into www.fly.io and you need to actually register for an account all right so you need to get one it is free for like small apps or I, I think not free it's like a really low amount they give you up to i think five dollars so sign up you will need a credit card but you can just delete the app if you don't want to pay anything that's all good um and then you register for your account once you've done that you will need to install the fly io cli right and this this is just so that you can actually run these commands to fly from your thing so for mac os like me brew install fly control or for linux they got one here and then also for windows so depending on your operating system jump up there and then do it okay so i'm going to open up my terminal now and we need to cd into back end okay jump into the back end and then from here we're going to run fly launch double there and then no deploy all right so we're going to launch a new app but we're not going to deploy it all right so it's going to find the docker app um, inside of rails um, it's creating an app uh, we're about to launch a fly and so what we can say here you can see is it's, it's launching into my organization so it's my personal one it's generating a name for this so if you want to name your app properly in production you're going to give this the actual app name it's going to launch into sydney which is my region my this is the machine no postgres no redis no tigress and do i want to tweak this i'm going to say yes and then what you're going to see is it's going to open up a new window for me to sign in okay so once you've signed in you now get all these um little things here so this is where you name your app so for instance if it was clipflow i'd do that i'd name it clipflow but it's not clipflow um it's just going to be called backend small forest so perfect um it's launching to the sydney region internal ports 3000 which is default for rails no postgres no thing and then there so you get to choose and set all these things so what organizations you deploy to what regions etc etc set those things and then confirm okay now what's going to happen is it's going to come back into here it's going to say cool close this guy now we're going to have our secrets set so it's going to now do a few things all right it's created our app 
All right. So now if we go and have a look, uh, let me jump back into Fly.io and go to the dash and have a look at the personal account. We're going to see this back end for Small Forest app, All right? So there's our app ready to go. It hasn't got any details or anything ready. It's still pending. Okay. But you can see that there's this credit. So that is important. Make sure that actually works for you. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create a deploy token, right? So this is going to create a token uh, that is available or alive for 900 and X blah, blah, many hours, which is years worth. So I'm going to create that. All right. Now I am going to create it and delete it. So don't try and use my tokens champs. Um, so we just need to fix this up, make it all on the same line. Fly tokens create deploy X. So we're creating a deploy token here. All right, so I'm going to run that. There's our deploy token. Okay. So grab that. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to jump into GitHub. We're going to jump into settings. We're going to go down here into code secure, uh, no secrets and variables. Open this little guy up and then we're going to go into action. So these are secrets for actions. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to set this fly API token. So you create a new repository secret. You call it fly API token, right? And then you paste in your secret here. Okay. So I'm just going to edit this one because I did it a while ago. I'm going to paste it. I'm going to update the secret. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to confirm access and save this. That's updated. Um, and now we've done that. So now what we can do is get back, jump back into our deploy API file here. And we are now going to add in this, the correct steps. Okay. So firstly, we're going to define, get rid of this deploying here and we're going to say users. And this is going to be actions slash checkout v4. So that's going to be a special little tool from GitHub that checks out our code from the branch that we're using. Next, we're going to have users and this is going to be super fly, fly control action. And let me just grab the correct one just so that we don't get stuffed up. All right. So it's super fly. So this is obviously fly IO fly control action set up fly control master. And that's the branch. So we can grab that one. Now we're going to say name is going to be deploy to fly IO. And then we're going to say this is important. This next step. So pay attention. Working directory is going to be dot backend. Okay. So because the GitHub workflow is at the root directory, we need to say when doing any of these steps, make sure we're, you move into the working directory, which is our backend. So because we are deploying the backend codes, we need to be in the backend directory. Okay. Very important. Took me a while to debug that one. Pay attention. Run. All right. So we're going to have fly control and we're going to have deploy and we're going to say remote only. So we're running the basically the step that we would normally do from our computer locally, but now we're running it as a step inside of GitHub. And then what we're doing is inside here, we're saying use an environment variable, which is the fly API token and it lives at secrets.fly API token. Okay. That's this one that we've just created. So it's going to use that. And this is cool. So it's all stored there. You don't have to keep using it. It's just stored inside of our run for everyone to use. And then also we need to jump into our back end. And then remember it fly created this new file for us when it said it was running. We need to have a look here. That was actually something I should have mentioned. We don't want to run on port 3000. We want to run on port 3002. So we're going to change that to there and that to there. Okay. Because we're remember we're running our front end and our API on different ports so that when we're doing them locally, we can talk to each other. Okay. Cause you can't run the same app on the same port. Front ends on 3000 back ends on 3002. All right. So that should be good there. We are just using a SQL like DB, which for now is fine. Um, that is good. So now, what we can do is we can open up our GitHub um, desktop and see the changes we've done. So we've done the changes to the deploy. We've got our new Docker file that was created by Fly. We've got our Fly uh, Toml file here. 
So if you ever need to make changes here, you can, if you want to change how many machines are running and all your timeout status, etc., etc. it's added a new gem and ran all that. So now what we're going to just say is going to say, uh, deploy step four backend. All right, we're going to hit that and hit push. Once that's pushed up, should now be able to see actions and go to API. And we can now see this step here is queued, all right? So we can see starting job. So what is it doing? So it's running through the actions checkout. It's got the fly one. And now it's deploying to fly IO. So it's running this command and you can see it's busy working through and it's waiting now for fly to do the builder. So fly is gonna start doing the building of this app. So we have a look at what's going on in here. We can have a look and we can even get our live logs. You can see nothing's really happening right now. We're just waiting. So we can see now that Fly is running. So what's it doing? It's busy building our Docker image for us, okay? So I've done a video on Docker before. If you have, don't know what Docker is, and I have a look at that one, but we're busy building the image now. And we're doing all the stuff. So these steps are coming from our Docker file, okay? So you can see here, this comes usually with the new Rails app, but it just, it builds our, um, a file where we're going to run our application, basically our environment or our, let's call it our, how would you describe it? It's your operating system. It's all built on Linux. And then it's installing our gems. It's pre-compiling our assets. It's installing any dependencies we might need, so libvips or images, all the things you need. So basically think of it as like it's setting up the computer where we're going to run our files. Um, this is probably wrong because that should probably be 3002. We'll see if it actually works. It's probably going to fail. But um, let's have a look. And then it's not, so it's busy launching a new machine. So we had our app, but it didn't have any machines. It's busy doing all this. So we should be able to see it. Here we go. So we've got our container running and you can actually see machines and it's busy creating a machine here. And we can have a look at the machine logs. and then it's busy setting it all up, right? So it's busy creating that machine for us. All right, so it's busy doing that. And it takes a bit of time on the first one anyway, but the good thing about this is that you don't have to be sitting and waiting on your computer and also your team doesn't have to worry about this. You guys can just deploy and then no matter who's deploying, it, sorry, who's pushing code, it'll all deploy and all with the same settings, right? So there we go, so look what it says. Visit your newly deployed app at now, let's just see here, if we go up, all right? So because it's an API mode, there is no base like page for it to render, so it's just gonna throw an error. But we know there's a little endpoint in Rails called up, and that's the up checkpoint, and it checks if the Rails app is running. You can see now it's given, I'm colorblind, please forgive me, but I believe this is green. Um, so if that is green and we get something, our app is running, all right? And you can see here, Health controller was rendered as show and it was completed with a 200. So we are golden. So our API is now live and kicking, okay? So now we've done the back end. Well done, let's keep moving. All right, onto the front end. So we now want to close all this nonce and open up deploy front end, all right? So the first thing that I like to do, because it creates so much pain for me, is jump into the next config.mjs file. And I'm just gonna open up this config here. I'm gonna have eslint, right? No, not that, eslint. Yes. And we wanna ignore during builds because that is so painful. We don't care if there are some linting issues when deploying to production. I don't want, I don't care about having an app with 100% perfect linting. That is not something I care about deploy. That is something I wanna pick up in PR review and earlier on, not now. TypeScript, same thing. I don't care if types are not 100%. Don't spend all your time trying to fix every single type in a project. You're just gonna go and send yourself down on a friggin' wild goose chase. So I had to ignore both of those because this just creates pain. Every time you deploy, fail. No, not into it. So I do that always. People will argue, fight me on the internet, but I don't care about that stuff. All right, moving on. We now want to add the API route to the front end config, okay? So in the front end, make sure we do this, source API 
base URL, okay? So I'm gonna grab this, which I prepared earlier and shove that there. But basically this is similar to what we had originally, but now you see this guy here, okay? Backend Shy Dawn 8299. That's not what our one's called, it's called this. Backend Small Forest dot fly dot dev. So we're gonna grab that and paste that in there. So now we got production URL. So now if you have a staging environment and a production, you could set these differently, which is all cool. But back in small forest, 9061.fly.dev and then forward slash V1, because remember we versioned our API. Now we want to hit the V1 and then remember the trailing slash, okay? That is important because that's where we're going to actually go and communicate to our API. Great. So that's a little bit of housekeeping that we need to do before, otherwise you end up in tears like I did for a couple of hours. Um, now, setting up the pipeline. So we need to create an account on Vercel. So it's vercel.com. And you're gonna need to set up yourself in a little an account here and do all that. So you can create an account with Vercel, register, do all the stuff. Um, that's all good. So that's important, make sure you do that. I, I like Vercel for Next.js. I think, you know, they make it and it works perfectly. No, you don't have to muck around. But now let's set it up on here. One, just one thing just to pull, point out is that Vercel is built to automatically deploy from master. So you don't actually need this step that I'm doing. The only reason I'm doing it like this is so that you can kind of have the two in sync and you can control how it works. But this step's actually, to be fair, if you're not, if you are using Vercel, probably not required, but I'm showing this as a proof of kind of concept if you were using something else. If you're using a different mechanism to deploy your front end or a different service, that you can actually go and implement these steps here. So I'm just showing you how you can create multi workflow inside of one app, okay? That being said, let's keep moving. Okay, so inside of deploy um, front end, we're now gonna add this end here. And we're gonna have Vercel org ID and Vercel project ID. So we need to define those variables because they don't exist, all those secrets yet. Now we're gonna say on push GitHub, and this is your branch name, same thing. Now we're gonna have the deploy, which is deploy to Vercel. We're using Ubuntu latest. We are concurrency deploy group. And now we got our steps. So, okay. So steps, firstly, users, actions, check out V4, right? Then we're gonna have um, name, install Vercel CLI. Then we're gonna have run NPM, install global global Vercel latest. So we basically want the Vercel command line tool, which is cool. Then what we wanna do is we wanna have name, and this is gonna be pool Vercel environment in information. And this is what we need to do. So we need to grab the working directory. And this is our front end. So remember in the last one we did back end, this is now front end. Makes sense, right? Then we're gonna run Vercel pool. And this is a yes flag. Environment is production. And then token is Vercel token, um, which is another variable we need to define. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to Vercel, we're gonna pull down the, the information for our app. And that either, I think it either creates or just grabs one, but if it matches, it will get the tokens for our org ID and our project ID. And we need a token similar to the fly API token here. So it'll be a Vercel token, which we need to create to do this. So we pass that through. Then we need to build the artifacts. Okay, so next step here, we're gonna have name, build project artifacts. We're gonna have working directory front end. Again, so every time, every step you actually have to define, I didn't find an easy way to define it once. Um, which is a bit annoying, but anyway, just a gotcha that you got to watch out for. And now what we're going to do is we're going to run this. I'm going to clean this up. So next public app environment is production. So the reason we need this is so that we can get it here. Um, 
I actually define, we'll set this up later, but this is to set this guy here, the app environment. Versale build token secrets Versale token. So the same thing. So now we're calling a Versale build. We're basically asking it to build our app for us. Okay. So that's that step. Name. Now what we're going to do is we're going to deploy the project artifacts to, to Versale. So an artifact is just basically all the things that come out of the build. Working directory front end. And then now we're going to run Versale deploy pre-built and the token is going to be secrets for sale token. So it's going to use the pre-built artifacts and push those up to Versel. All right. So now what we need to do is we need to get our environment variables. So there's a little uh, URL here, which is from Versel, And it's like, how do I get a Versel access token? So go through these steps right create your token i'm not going to go through and do it for you but you can go through these steps in this url here which is versale.com slash guide slash how do i use a versale api access token but i'll try and paste the link to that um, for you guys um, and then you can do that create a token you need to install the versale cli as well right so you need to do this get this guy similar to the fly IO one. So installing the Vercel CLI, you can do that there, quite simple. Um, and then once installed, navigate to the front end project. Okay, so now that you've got all this stuff here, let's go into CD front end. And then we're gonna run Vercel link, okay? Um, and then it's gonna say set up this one. We're gonna say yes. And say, where do you want this project? So I'm going to put in my personal. Uh, do you want to link to an existing? No. What's your project name? So this is just going to be next JS Rails demo. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, in what directory is your code located? So we are in the front end. So it's basically just this one. And then it sets up the project, right? Um, do I want to modify any of these settings? I'm going to say no. Okay, so now it's created a project. So let's have a look. Um, do Has it created it in here yet? Not yet. But let's have a look now. Now we can add the project. So if we go into front end, first cell, and look at this project JSON, you can now see that we've got a project ID and an org ID right? These are the, what we're using, project and org. So we need to now go into GitHub. Get out of this guy. Settings, same thing, right? So you're going to set, set up secrets and variables and actions. And you're going to set these up. So org versal underscore org ID, you set that. Set the project ID. So whatever yours is, you need to do that those are yours and then the Vercel token which is the api token you created earlier set those up inside of new repository secret all right all happy days and then once you've got those environment variables ready you're now able to push up the changes and have a look so let's go and give that a go so in here you can see we've added all our code we've got our next js config we got our base url um, and then let's have a look. There's one thing that I think I just need to ch double check on. So what we need to do is we just need to fix this one thing, which I actually remembered is this part here. So we need to just paste this. We need to first go base URLs and we need to check that next public app environment. So that's this guy, which will be set to production. So when that's production, we're gonna look for base URLs production, all right? So that's what we wanna do there. So we're gonna just set that one. Okay, that's all good. Just didn't want to forget that step because that would not work. Um, back in small forest. Okay, so now we can say uh, deploy to the cell. Push those up. Um, and then have a look here. So if we go into our actions and then in the front end, we can see in here, it's going to set up its job and do its thing. So you can see it's busy not going to let this whole thing run but if you see it installed the cl pulled the in environment information uh built building the project artifacts 
and that's basically creating an optimized production build. So this is usually what will happen. You'll get a little build folder. It's busy doing, it's compiled, generating all the pages. This is the same stuff you see when you're actually deploying to Vercel. Now it's uploading this through and you can now see we've got a URL. All right, if I click on that, that's busy building. You can actually see the project there. It's still building. So when that's finished building, we can have a look. There we go. Done. All right. Ready. Okay. Boom. There we are. So now if we check this, let's just make sure this is all actually working because you can see that it's hit users and it's look you can see it's made a request to the back end small forest fly dev it's got a get request with zero options if we create a new user we go can grief hit save boom there we are so we are deployed to production production i say that lightly um, but we are deployed our app we have deployed it to next, we've deployed it to fly, and it's now all automated. So if you just make some code changes, push that guy up on the branch of choosing. So usually you'll run this on possibly main and it'll be to a staging environment if you're running a proper app. And then you'd have a, when you merged from main into production, you would have a production environment. But I'm just deploying straight up because you know what, YOLO. But so if you were to doing, you could have deploy front end staging and you could just have the branch here staging and then you could have deploy to production and you have a branch production and you could set up the same, basically the same workflow. You're just going to toggle out these environments from staging to production and the same with the API. You can do, you know, you could have an app named um, backend staging, backend production. You, you do you, but that's how it all works. So hopefully you learned a lot there. I did which certainly learn a bit when I did this because I haven't used GitHub workflows before or GitHub actions. I was always using Bitbucket. Very similar. Once you kind of get how these things work, they're all very similar. So you could be using CircleCI, you could be using GitHub, you could be using um, Bitbucket, you name it. But here we are, we've got an actual app running on the internets for everyone to see. Your friends can all go and add themselves as users and create great times. So hope you enjoyed that one and I will catch you on the next one.